Hello, BookTube. All right, I'm back. I'm alone. My guest has left. <laughs> uh, and we were in the middle of a mail hall. So we did Show by James Lee Byrne. Uh, and now we'll move on. This thing is a mystery to me. It, it, it's thin enough to be one page. So I, I don't know what this is. It's too thin to be a slim volume of poetry. It's too slim to be a catalog. It's I don't know what this It probably, uh, weirdly, some sort of book advertisement that somebody just decided to send me instead of sending me the book. Uh, it's kind of strange. Oh, okay, oh, great, okay, this is, uh, it's not a book advertisement, it's kind of a book trailer of a type that publishers will send you if they don't have review copies to send out yet. And this is uh, Birds of the Photo Arc, which is, uh, the photo arc is this, this uh, project where a photographer brings animals into a studio, takes pictures of them, high definition, beautiful pictures of them, and the, the original book is called The Photo Arc, and it's incredible, <laughs> just incredible. Uh, and this is more of the same. So you have you have birds just brought into close personal personal close up, that, uh, and then talking about them. Uh, wonderful! Oh, fantastic! I, all right. So this is this is sort of a, a taste of of what the birds of the photo arc is going to be like. This is going to be, uh, I think, it comes out soon. And it's it's as cheesy as it is to say it's going to be the ultimate gift to give to anyone who loves birds, because <laughs> uh, you're getting you're getting the real thing, the real the real people right there in front of the camera, uh, sitting still and in high definition. So that's okay. So I'll get the book eventually. We'll we'll, we'll see the book on this channel eventually. So we'll, we'll move on to the next one here. Oops, also a little slight. Oh, okay, great. Uh, this uh, comes out in April. Uh, and it is, uh, I requested this, this is The Soul of the Thief by Stephen Hartog. And uh, I requested it from the publisher because it, it sounded kind of good. <laughs> it's, it, it sounded kind of good. Uh, good enough, certainly, for me to request because I, I love reading. <laughs> I love reading all kinds of things. Uh, and when I requested it, when the publisher started back and said, yeah, I'll, I'll send you out a copy right away, she also just mentioned, oh, and by the way, the book is amazing. And you might think that a book publicist does that just as a matter of course. That's part of their job. But it's been my experience that a lot of them add a particular emphasis. They have, so to speak, a particular gleam in their email when they're writing about a book of theirs, a book in their list that they genuinely like, that they think is genuinely good. They do, of course, push all of their books. But I've noticed that when it's, when it's personal, you can tell. And uh, and so now I'm extra interested to read this. I was interested anyway. Uh, let's see here. Uh, uh, Stefan Brand, adjutant to a colonel in the Waffen-SS, has made it through the war so far in spite of his commander's habit of bringing his staff into battle and in spite of the heritage that he has so far managed to conceal. Uh, instead, his growing interest in his commander's mistress may be the end of him, were, uh, were Colonel Himmel to notice. Colonel Himmel has other concerns, however. He can see the war's end on the horizon and recognizes that he is not on the winning side, uh, no matter what the reports from Hitler's generals may say. So he has taken matters into his own hands, hatching a plan to escape Europe and the Allies only after stealing a fortune from them. And I, I really, the description of that, I really like the, the twinning of those two stories. So uh, it's, it's, it comes out in April, so I won't, I won't read it until the new year, but I'm interested. Uh, so it's the soul of a thief. We'll we'll talk about it again. Uh, sorry, I think I've got a sneeze coming off. Uh, all right, let's do the let's do this next one. What is this next one? Uh, oh, great, fantastic! All right, I requested this as well. I have a soft spot for this kind of thing. Uh, I I'm not an expert on movies the way a lot of you are. Some of you are experts on film and cinema and cinema history and whatnot, and I'm not. But I love books about the entertainment industry. I, I've read a lot of them that I really liked. And this one gives me a good vibe. <laughs> uh, it also is due in April. It's Giant uh, by Don Graham. This is the story of, uh, well, it says Elizabeth Taylor, Rock Hudson, James Dean, Edna Ferber, and the making of a legendary American film. And the thing that I really liked, even about the cover, uh, is that the writer, Edna Ferber, is given a mention. <laughs> I, in, in fact, you know, it's kind of amazing. You know, in a lesser... I don't know how good this book is, but I'm very happy that everybody is mentioned when you could easily see a book like this, a lesser version of this book, 
mentioning only James Dean. Uh, so what, what have we got here? Let's see. <clears throat> I've actually read a description of this thing. Uh, Isolating his cast in the wilds of West Texas in the summer of 1955, director George Stevens brought together a volatile mix of egos, anxieties, sexual tension, and talent. Stevens certainly had his handful with Hudson's latent insecurities, Taylor's high diva dom, and Dean's rebellious antics. Yet he coaxed performances out of them that made cinematic history, winning Stevens the Academy Award for Best Director, and garnering nine other nominations, including a nomination for Best Actor for James Dean who died before the film was finished. Uh, so this is going to be a whole story of, uh, of, of the movie Giant, of its genesis from beginning to end. Uh, and it comes out in the middle of April. Uh, and it intrigues me. It absolutely intrigues me. So, uh, huh. All right, so uh, we're doing okay here. Let's, let's move on. Uh, nice variety. Let's see if we can keep the variety going. Oh, fantastic. Oh, great. Okay. Uh, this, I think, comes out in April as well. Oh, no, late March. This comes out in late March. I requested this as well. This, this sounds really good. Uh, it's Tom Bissell. It's Magic Hours. Essays on Creators and Creation. That's what it's going to look like. Uh, uh, in Magic Hours, award-winning essayist Tom Bissell explores the highs and lows of the creative process. Uh, he takes us from the set of The Big Bang Theory to the first novel of Ernest Hemingway to the final work of David Foster Wallace, from films of Werner Herzog to the films of Tommy Wiseau to the editorial meeting in which Paula Fox's work was relaunched into the world. Uh, and these were originally published in The uh, New Yorker and Harper's and whatnot, so they're all collected here, and uh, I, I love that kind of thing. So, uh, great. Fantastic. All right. Uh, all right, let's. Uh, we've got two more to go here. Let's let's move on. This one is in one of these fancy, fancy schmancy plastic packages. Uh, what is this? Oh, great. Okay, great. All right, this is all Steve. This is Steve Greatest Hits. Uh, I requested this as well. This is coming out in February of the new year, uh, and it it seemed very interesting to me. It uh, not only. Uh, not least because it's beautiful. Uh, it's it's what the night sings by Vesper Stamper, uh, and it is uh, it's an illustrated novel about the Holocaust. Uh, before she was taken away, Gerda played the viola every day, walked home from choir practice with her papa, and admired the beautiful dresses in her stepmother's closet. Before she was taken away, Gerda did not know she was Jewish. Uh, two years later, Gerda's world has completely changed. The Nazis have destroyed everyone and everything in her life. And when Gerda is liberated from the concentration camp, she finds herself utterly bereft. In the displaced persons camp where she is sent, she meets Lev, a fellow teen survivor who has visions of a new life for himself. Gerda must also begin to live again, but without her loved ones or her music, and choose a new future. But what does that mean when your identity has been stripped away? when learning that the word Jewish really means only the first step. Uh, and it's it's full of uh, halftone illustrations. Let me, see, let me show you. It's full of, of halftone illustrations uh, all throughout. And I don't, uh, I think it's uh, it's YA, but I uh, I got an interesting vibe off it. We shall see. I There are, there are a couple of ways that it could go wrong. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, whatever you mix the Holocaust with any kind of romance plot, there are, uh, there are a couple of ways it could go wrong. It's one of those it's one of those backdrops that you don't ever want to trivialize. <laughs> uh, it's like uh, it was it was a it's a, a problem that was hilariously underlined in one line from a movie review from ages ago uh, in Rolling Stone. Rolling Stone did a review of uh, Michael Bay's movie Pearl Harbor, <laughs> and. and and correctly zeroed in on one of the most absurd lines in the movie where the, the, the female love interest is, is talking to the, the male lead uh, and says, you know, uh, that our relationship was blossoming. And then all this happened. <laughs> yeah, the bombing of Pearl Harbor. All this happened. <laughs> and that, that sort of underscores that, you know, uh, that the... You know, the, the Titanic is more important than Rose, <laughs> that, that, that sort of thing. Uh, so you, it's tricky. It's tricky to do. Some historical settings are easier than others uh, to do it with, and the Holocaust is the hardest one of all. So we'll see. Uh, but in the meantime, let's move on to this last one. What is this last one? 
Oh, okay, great. Uh, this is a novel. Uh, it's called The Waters in the Wild. It's by DeSales Harrison. I wish I was called DeSales. I wish my name was DeSales. I want to be called DeSales. Uh, and uh, I requested this as well. It, it, uh, I think it's a thriller. It, it, something I like the cut of its jib. Let's see here. Uh, Daniel Abend is a, psychoanal a psychoanalyst and single parent living in New York City with a successful practice and a comfortable life, an apartment on the Upper West Side, a beautiful teenage daughter, and an untroubled daily routine. He's a goner. <laughs> when one of his young parents, well, one of his young patients, commits suicide, it is a tragedy, but one easily explained by her depression and drug addiction. But shortly after, Daniel receives an ominous note that makes him question his patient's death. A few days later, his daughter abruptly disappears. A series of letters from an unknown sender ensnares Daniel in an increasingly desperate search for his daughter and for the truth, a search that stretches back decades to when he was a young man living in Paris, falling in love with a woman who would upend his life. Uh, with lyrical prose and masterful plotting, this is a sophisticated and surprising literary mystery about passion, betrayal, and redemption. Uh, that's... <clears throat> we shall see <laughs> it's, a, it's a it's a it looks like it's going to try to be a literary thriller and those usually disappoint uh but uh i i kind of liked the... <laughs> you're just determined to upstage me aren't you <laughs> it's not hard to do <laughs> but she's adorable she's being particularly adorable today uh and uh and she must know she must sense i mean it's a it's a beautiful crisp late spring day here on the second day of december in new england so we're going to uh she's going to nap and I'm going to work for a bit and then we're going to go on an enormous walk <laughs> in the Arnold Arboretum. We're going to go on an enormous walk over Hill and Dale. If I can manage, I will vlog it uh, because I, I have the phone. It works just fine. I can take video. I just, uh, I've been so thrilled. I've been so thrilled lately at having the Arboretum open again. I, I could have gone there at any time, but when I was caretaking elderly dogs, infirm elderly dogs, we couldn't go there together, so I didn't want to go there at all. And now I can go there. I can get there in a minute. We can sail along, and then we can explore at, at leisure. And uh, so the last few times I've done it, I could have vlogged, but it just never even crossed my mind. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to try to do that because it's Vlogmas. <laughs> I don't really know what Vlogmas is. I'm, I'm going to research it today because I, I want to I wanna join in the fun if it's fun. But I think I, I vlog anyway. Do I vlog anyway, BookTube? Are these vlogs? I don't, I don't really know. I'm on one way or another. So we have, uh, let's do the Steve Pyramid. We have What the Night Sings, an ambitious illustrated novel. Uh, we have uh, The Water is in the Wild, a uh, literary thriller. Uh, we have Magic Hours by Tom Bissell, a collection of essays about the creative process. We have Giant, um, a history and study of the, the genesis and the onset dynamics of the famous movie. We have The Soul of a Thief, uh, a World War II mystery thriller. And uh, from a previous fragment of a video, we have uh, James Lee Burke's Robo Show. So heavy on the on the uh, thriller mystery uh, this time around, but that's okay by me. I love that kind of thing. Uh, so that's it. I will I will see you soon. We'll have plenty more to do. Uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna sign off uh, for now and get some work done. <laughs> Thank you, Book Two.